Welcome everyone. I'm delighted to have on the show today, Ash Oro from freedomproxy.org. He is the co-founder of that and the host of EOS Radio. Welcome to the show, Ash. Hey, Naomi. Thanks for inviting me on. So today we are talking about EOS. There's been a lot of EOS stuff in the news. Some big news that just came out this week, mm. just the other day, was that EOS is uh, targeting inflation. They're actually reducing inflation by, I think, 80%. So That's walk right. us through what's going on there and what, what they've done. Yeah, so in the initial launch of the blockchain, the inflation was set at 5%. And the idea there was that 1% would be used to pay for the block producers, basically our version of miners on delegated proof of stake. And you know that's the help pay for them and the, the security they bring in keeping up with the blockchain and, and supporting transactions rather than paying a uh, transaction fee. So in EOS, uh, inflation is what pays for our block producers rather than you having to pay a transaction fee each time. So 1% of that 5%, overall 5% was going to, is still to pay for our block producers. And the other 4% originally was dedicated for like a worker proposal system of sorts. You know, we've seen this in Dash, for instance, where they have a worker proposal system and they can vote on it and deploy funds however the community sees fit. Well, the EOS community up to this point, and EOS is about to turn um, one year old, and the community wasn't able to come up with uh, a system to distribute the, the, these 4% inflation funds. And so what we've decided now, there's 35 million EOS at $5 uh, a token. That's, that's a lot of money. That's over $100 million. Um, we don't know what to do with it yet. So the idea was let's, uh, let's remove that extra 4%. So reduce inflation from the original 5% down to 1% to still cover the block producers. And then let's actually burn that 53 million or so EOS that's just been sitting in this pool. Uh, that's not doing anything. So yeah, EOS inflation. And this has just happened this week. You know, the community created an on-chain referendum and us, we token holders voted on it to try to express what our preferences were, spend it, destroy it, you know, whatever. And now the block producers actually signed the multi-sig that's required. 15 out of 21 block producers, active block producers, needed to sign a multi-sig in order to um, approve of the burning of the 50 million tokens and to reduce the inflation. And that just happened in the past, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of days now. That is a really dramatic move. So $100 million that was sitting there. I mean, what was the rationale for burning those tokens? Yeah, so it's $175 million worth of tokens that are about oh. to be burned. And it, it, burning tokens is a great way to give value back to token holders. And up to this point, we just did not have the confidence that we could spend that inflation money in an efficient way that it would create more value than the additional inflation would inflate away to, by diluting the value of everyone's tokens. So the, the safe thing to do right now until we're a bit more organized and, and focused on like how we could use this money po possibly for core development infrastructure and such on EOS is to, to burn the tokens. We remove the risk of people thinking they have great, you know, you know how socialist systems work. And I use that term uh, loosely here because this is voluntary socialism, which as an anarcho-capitalist, I'm completely okay with. But uh, it was just safer. The community thought at this point, there's this big pool of funds everybody's got great ideas and all they need is money. And so for now we're going to burn these tokens and we're going to reduce inflation from 5% to 1%. And then if we need to inflate in the future for core infrastructure development or something like that, we can always do that. But for now it's safest just to burn it. That's a really ballsy move there. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. And also, I mean, you hear in the, in the crypto sphere, like inflation's a dirty word that people mm -hmm. throw around. And, uh, and when people say like, oh, you know, there's this coin that inflates indefinitely and it's looked down upon for that. But we have to look at what the inflation schedule of Bitcoin is right now. You know, mm -hmm. like that doesn't taper out until 2140. So in the meantime, what is it? Like 4% a year 4%, that we're inflating yeah. the supply. And I guess we don't really feel it that much because there's so many new people entering the ecosystem. And so much new capital coming in. So, Absolutely. You know, I, I can't remember how many millions of dollars every day needs to come into the Bitcoin ecosystem just to keep the price stable to offset that 4% inflation. You know, th think about, you know, EOS is a much smaller market cap than Bitcoin for now. Uh, but that at 1%, that's even that much less capital that needs to come into the EOS ecosystem to support the price. So, yeah, I, I think this is a very strong move. It is ballsy. Um, you know, people aren't used to the idea of just being able to change inflation like this on a blockchain. They're used to a, 
a proof of work system where the inflation is for the most part considered set in stone. But I think it shows the strength of the governance model on EOS that the community were able to come together and decrease inflation by 80%. It's pretty amazing. Well, I mean, if we're going to test this system of being able to change inflation, it definitely went in the right direction. The last thing you want to see is to have a coin right. going from 4% and they're like, oh, now we're just going to keep inflating it. It's going to be 10%, money for everyone, you know? Is there a danger there if suddenly, you know, people, different people come into governance at EOS and mm. decide to put it in the other direction? Sure. I, look, there's always that risk that um, cons consensus could change. I mean, this is for all blockchains. You know, we've heard some Bitcoiners talk about creating ongoing inflation to help yeah. subsidize the miners. Um, yeah, there's always, you know, blockchains exist to support communities. And if a community decides that it wants to raise inflation, just like we've recently lowered inflation, that's definitely something they could do. And if you don't like it, you know, <clears throat> voluntary systems, sell your EOS tokens, get the hell out of there or stay in the EOS system and buy one of the many stable coins popping up on EOS and then uh, you know, remove yourself from being inflated away by the native token. We're all battling uh, a world of printing money and creating and printing tokens. And so I, I think that what we're seeing is if there's a blockchain which has a set in stone inflation rate, well, that doesn't give the community a lot of opportunity for the flexibility, economic flexibility, that I think is absolutely necessary in blockchain asset economies. I mean, how, how can you be so confident that you've nailed your inflation rate? I mean, why wouldn't you want your community and the leaders of your community, uh, the people who secure your chain, to, to have an option to at least explore ideas about what you can do with inflation. Look, inflation work has worked really, really well for the U.S. government. It just so happens it's worked really crappy for us because we're forced into the system. But what if you were represented in a blockchain society where you could express yourself on chain about what you wanted to do with inflation, raise it, lower it, use it for this, don't use it for that. And there was a feedback loop that your voice could be heard and things happen. Inflation changes. And I think it's really significant that digital blockchain communities have the opportunity to do that because we need to experiment here. The government's been experimenting with their inflation for a long time at our demise. Well, it's about time that we can experiment with inflation and the audacity to think that we'll get inflation correct, exactly correct on the first go uh, still is astonishing to me. Well, it's definitely an interesting system. And what I like most about the crypto ecosystem is that there are so many experimentations going on. And there's no system that we're being forced into. We, as you said, we can opt in or out of any of these systems. So it provides great competition. So perhaps you're right that that flexibility will be great because then people and platforms can respond to market demands about what people want to see on different platforms as well. So that's definitely an interesting direction. Yeah, it is. And I really recommend that all blockchain communities start looking at creative ways to use inflation while also protecting the value of the underlying asset for the token holder. Because we definitely don't want to create uh, communities where everybody gets wrecked because inflation gets out of the way. So yeah, it's really exciting. Variable inflation, voluntary variable inflation. And the best thing is, is that if you don't agree with it, you don't have to participate. So that's what all this wonderful experimentation is about. But thank you so much for chatting with me, Ash. This has been really great. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.